ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick. On behalf of the Killer Whale training team, I would like to welcome you to Orca Stadium. Being a part of SeaWorld's mission is more than just a job. We are proud of what we do, and it is a privilege for us to care for, build relationships with, teach, and learn from these amazing animals. Now more than ever, we are honored to share our relationships with the whales and what we have learned with all of you. And now, SeaWorld proudly presents Orca Encounter.
our killer whale family showing off their incredible size, speed, power, and complex learning abilities. These behaviors keep our whales active and engaged. SeaWorld's killer whales have inspired generations all over the world, and we are excited to share their story with you today. Killer whales are the ocean's top predator. They use cooperation and communication, not just size and strength, to take their place at the top of the ocean's food web. At the bottom are small animals, like krill. At the top, the apex predator, the killer whale. to an environment that is full of enrichment. We spend days, weeks, months, and years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you present your arm to draw blood, or step on the scale to see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Today, we'll see the whales moving together in unison. These synchronized behaviors strengthen social bonds and enable them to problem solve as a group. Working together as a team makes them the ocean's top predator. Scientifically known as Orsinus orca, commonly referred to as killer whales. Here at SeaWorld, we like to call them Katina, Nalani, Malia, Trua, and Makayo, our killer whale family. Makai was the youngest whale at just 12 years old, and the oldest is Makai's mother, Katina, who this year celebrated her 46th birthday. <laughs> Katina is also the matriarch, the leader of our pod. Now here at SeaWorld, our training techniques create a language between us and the whales. It's a language of learning through positive reinforcement, encouragement, commitment, and care. Through those techniques and our relationships, we're able to train behaviors like the one you see right here. This is a position in which we would ask for a voluntary blood sample. As you can see, Malia was asked to roll ventral and present her tail flukes. Not only does this give us a great look at Malia's entire body, but it also gives us access to the blood vessels that are easily seen on the white undersides of her tail flukes. Our ver veterinarians collect a, a blood sample from the whales at least once a month. As you can see, the whales are trained to remain calm and relaxed throughout the procedure. Now, if you watch us as trainers, we're always rubbing down the whales, sometimes on their backs or their bellies, sometimes even on their tail flukes. The whales have very sensitive skin, and this is just one way we can reward them for remaining calm throughout procedures like this. Now, this is another important diagnostic this is a behavior that we use to weigh the killer whales, but instead of asking them to slide their bodies up and out of the water, here at the slide out, we actually have a giant killer whale sized scale in one of our adjacent pools. Now, Malia here weighs in at about 5,500 pounds. You'll notice though, when she slides up, a portion of her body from her dorsal fin to her tail flukes is still in the water. That is the powerhouse of the killer whale. It's called her peduncle. Very muscular, very heavy. If we were to weigh Malia with her peduncle still in the water, we would not be weighing the whole whale. So we simply ask her to raise it up and out of the water. And just like that, training this posture enables us to ensure accuracy so that we know the younger whales are growing properly and that the older whales are maintaining a healthy weight. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital, and we surprise and engage with our whales at every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt, and for the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. Did you guys know that killer whales 
love to play. They actually learn a lot by playing, and they also learn through things called mimicry and observational learning. From a very young age, killer whales learn important life skills by playing games like follow the leader with their mothers and other whales. And we are gonna put that to the test today with my soaking, freezing friend, Amber Lynn, and everybody on this side of the stadium. Are you guys ready to have some fun? All right, you guys hang tight, we'll be over there in a minute. This side, if you would like to participate, stay right where you are, just stand up. All right, now we are gonna play Killer Whale Follow the Leader. Amber Lynn is the leader. Your guys are gonna follow her and we're gonna ask Delani to do the same thing. All right, Amber Lynn, keep those hands at your side and turn around in a circle. Ready, go. Come on, everybody, let's see that circle. Delani's got it. As you can see, she was watching very close. Killer whales are very curious animals often see them jumping completely out of the water to get a better look around and Malia's going to show that off. So when we see her, let's give her a great big cheer. <laughs> Nicely done. All right, I told you guys I was coming this way next. Now, we're going to do a behavior called a breach. Something much, much bigger, way cooler. But killer whales will breach often to uh, kind of show off. So what better way to show off than to hang out with my new friend, John. John, what's up, man? All right, here's what we're gonna do. Did you teach him the signal? Did you teach your team? All right, team, are we ready? John, I thought you said you taught your team. All right, team, on your feet, let's go. Signal's gonna look like this, down and up. Everybody's got it. All right, John, face your killer whale. On the count of three, everybody, let's do that signal. One, two, three, go. Nice breach signal. Now, John, like every good killer whale trainer knows, you have to keep your eye on the whale. So get really close, John. Yeah, real close, perfect, yep. Now you stay right there, because we're gonna watch Katina as she makes her way down nearly 40 feet, and then she's gonna be coming up and out of the water. And I think she's gonna be showing off. however, can only be gained through field research. And that's why SeaWorld partners with such groups as the Norwegian Orca Survey and NOAA to advance global education. We have learned that killer whales are powerful animals, and perhaps the best expression of that power can be seen when they hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators, and just about any other ocean animal could be their dinner. where they live and their chosen prey, they've developed some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will teach themselves, riding in on waves just long enough to catch prey. They'll also create waves that knock animals like penguins or seals from ice cliffs. Most importantly, they cooperate, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of herring. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with swipes of their tail flukes. So killer whales create waves when they hunt, and they use their tail flukes to stun their prey. You're about to see a demonstration. For our whales, it's a high energy activity session. But for all of you, it means it's time to get wet.
food every day. In the wild, killer whale diets vary depending on where they live and time of year. Unfortunately, overfishing, pollution, and other factors are having a serious impact on some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals, and it's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Oh. Killer whales depend on a plentiful food source and a clean environment. They're completely dominant, yet completely dependent. When it comes down to it, killer whales are not the most powerful animal in the ocean.
Joe.